wonderful. Here we are. So I thought instead of doing boring slides, I'd do a live demo and show you some code. Um, so my problem is I have like lots and lots and lots of pictures, but um, don't know what is in them. And that's why I was looking for some machine learning uh, solution which lets me um, look into what is in the pictures. And as you know, I have a conference, lots of people, so I decided to go for faces, and DLib actually has pretty good support for that. Um, DLibNet is a library which I'm using. Um, they have like a ton of features on machine learning, and I'm just using like, you know, their face recognition. And this is basically what got me started, um, where they, you know, can match the faces of these people to, to a group each. And that is what my application is now doing um, with the conference photo. So this is the, the first runner, which just goes through every picture and gets every, every uh, image out of there and just, you know, put that into a map, etc. And then later, uh, this goes into a cluster runner uh, where we have a neural network um, which comes from DLib from the example which just correlates those pictures and gives them a value in some n-dimensional vector space and then matches those images and groups the pictures by uh, a call to the Chinese whispers algorithm. So, um, but this is also, you know, kind of boring to see um, in code. So let's do a little bit of a presentation of the actual program. Um, so as you see here, some pictures uh, with all the faces on it. Or no pic uh, so uh, one thing you can see here is like if the faces are too small, uh, it doesn't find it. And there is an optimization for it. Um, you just blow up the image by the factor of two, or you have four times as much data and you can detect uh, images and faces which are smaller. Um, and I can sort by, um, by the number of faces, as you see here. So we also get only the pictures with a lot of faces on, on top or on bottom. And I also can sort on the face area in the picture which already has some interesting results to, you know, to get either pictures with, which are in one or the other group. But actually, if I have, once I have the faces and the face correlation, I can actually uh, group the faces which are in one group, and this is usually the same person. Um, it has to, you have to play around a little bit with this with each image set to, to get the perfect result. But as you see, um, it's pretty good with grouping people. Um, and one plan, which I currently don't have, um, I have now kind of, although this kind of gives a, a social graph because I know every, every face and every image and I know which faces are the, should be the same person. And then I could kind of draw a, a graph between connections between the images. And uh, I did that in the past uh, in a similar fashion for the dependencies in Boost. And this is the whole application itself, the UI you see is built with Qt. And I have still this framework, I just have to teach it to display images and then I can basically get the graph uh, which I already currently have in the program and display it. But I haven't done this yet. And with that, let's go quickly back to the code. So um, I think you have heard a lot about Qt this morning already. And this is actually some code with, uh, which uses Qt as, as the front end for the UI. Um, because we still don't have a modern C++ UI which is cross-platform and usable. Um, and one thing which Qt really likes to do is it makes you subclass uh, all kinds of things. Like this is a, a runner which is actually runnable, which runs in their thread pool, and you have a subclass for each runner, uh, a class. And you, you get to write boilerplate code. That's, that's, that's exciting. We all like that. Um, and then I thought, well, maybe I, I want to do this with a lambda. So this is kind of a, a SED function currently. Probably can improve on that. Um, but Qt also has some, some dependencies on this. This cannot be a template, for example, because of Qt. Um, so at the end, I have a run function which takes a Q variant. Uh, I assert that the task is actually there. Then I run the task, I get the return value, and I um, emit the finished 
a call to to the user again if, if they subscribe to the signal or not. Um, and that's what I use now in my code um, for plugging in all kinds of runner builds at the end. Um, this is a code which actually does some of the correlation. I also tried to correlate with uh, histogram data, but that doesn't work currently as, as supposed as I wanted to work. So faces are currently the way to go. I'm probably also going to train some image analyzers, uh, which I don't know. One, th one thing I see is like the back of a head is interesting to be detected because a lot of images are like showing people looking at slides or something, though you only see the back and not the face. Um, and with that, I'm done. Thank you.